Remember when everyone thought the Mandalorian was about Din Djarin? Well, season 3 has told us otherwise. Tong's days, am I right? His redemption arc was over after about an hour of screen time, and since then I don't really know how to describe what has been going on. We took a detour to Coruscant to catch up with Dr. Pershing, and if we overlook that part, everything else has pretty much been the Grogu and Bo-Katan show. You take it easy on him, kid. About a month ago, I made a video regarding this Mandalorian, and why I thought she was going to be a sort of overarching anti-hero throughout the season, but so far I have been very, very wrong. This is the way. This is the way. Instead of building on the obvious tension between these two familiar faces, Jon Farrow shows another path, and I'm willing to call this one even more interesting. All through the content we have seen Bo-Katan, her ideology has pretty much been the same, but season 3 of Mando has actually started to shift this by putting her in an awkward situation she could never have imagined. I want you to paint a picture of you being on a walk, and suddenly, out of nowhere, you witness a unicorn fly by. I think any one of us would totally lose our minds, because unicorns aren't real. By watching Bo's reaction to the Mythosaur, I would say that this possibly weird comparison to a made-up animal is quite similar. The stories she has heard since she took her first step were suddenly true, and witnessing this stubborn Mandalorian slowly deal with this phenomenon has been the most fascinating part of season 3. Did you see anything alive? Alive? Like what? Nothing. Bo is from one perspective going through similar struggles like Din Djarin did, in that both of them kind of have their own identity crisis. I for one imagined she would instantly take off her helmet without a second thought. Yet a combination of her allies leaving her to become scavengers, her home being destroyed by the Empire, and the Mythosaur revelation, she has until now been living by the Creed. You could think that the armorer and the entire community would feel some sort of resentment towards her past past and now former ideology, but no, they treated her like anyone else, and I think that actually caught her by surprise. You are the leader of the war party. You have the honor of staying by the fire. This is the way. It's obviously too early to tell if bo is seriously considering joining them for good, but her final conversation with the armorer in chapter 20 suggests that it's more likely than you might think. But it was real. This is the way. She is gradually being more optimistic towards the idea that the old ways of Mandalore might have something powerful and important to say, and I have a feeling that bo will revisit the minds of Mandalore for a more straightforward confrontation with the Mythosaur. The way she wielded the Darksaber felt so natural, at least compared to Mando, and the way she led the hunting party very much illustrated that she had done similar things before. I don't know if all of this is foreshadowing for some larger, but I have very much enjoyed seeing Bo's journey in this season. But where is this season actually heading? That's a valid question many people wonder. So far we haven't even got a villain, and no, I don't count the silly pirate as a villain. We're almost halfway through the story, and I have no clue to where it's heading. Grogu has of course been a highlight for me, and the flashback scene in episode 4 was just great, but I very much hope that the story picks up in the upcoming chapters. If you want to continue the Mando train, why don't you watch this video about Grogu, and why I think he has been different in season 3. Thank you as always for watching, and may the force be with you.